Welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to learn how to age well, look and feel good for longer, and share that honestly with you. And I think 2023 was the year I learned most to date about science-backed healthy aging, as well as the best ways to rejuvenate our skin and keep it in good shape. Unsurprisingly, these two things are inextricably linked. So from exosomes and growth factors in skincare to the best devices we can use to stimulate collagen production and tone our facial muscles to lifestyle changes and the free things we can do to reverse and slow some of the signs of aging on our skin. Here's what I discovered in 2023 after poring over the research and speaking to some really clued up experts. So first off, let's take a look at an area of skin and healthcare that's about to explode and that's the use of exosomes and growth factors to reverse age-related damage. Exosomes are something you're going to hear more and more about when it comes to anti-aging and they are little sphere-like sacs that contain growth factors and peptides which all form a crucial part of our cells communication and messaging system. In other words, we really need them to direct our cells to function fully. Like so many things, they decline as we age, so our skin cells receive less exosome and growth factor input, and slowly our skin loses the ability to effectively renew and repair itself, leading to those signs of aging we know so well. So we're seeing a flurry of new exosomes-based treatments coming onto the market, including microneedling facials, which I tried recently and loved, so I'll be sharing my review of that on the channel very soon. And you can also get subdermal injections into the deeper layers of your skin. And this was the year I started to use growth factor-based skincare daily in my own routine. So I've been using products from the pioneering skin and hair care company, Calisim, after their hair serum made a dramatic difference to my 80-year-old dad's bald patch on the top of his head, where he now has a thin but very visible and welcome layer of hair coverage. And he and my husband still microstamp the serum into their scalps once a week to maintain their hair thickening results. And I thought that if the serum could have such an impact on hair follicles, I wanted to see what it could do for my own skin. So it was actually Callisim's facial serum that was used in my microneedle exosomes facial at the Dr. Victoria Clinic in Edinburgh just the other week. And that's the aesthetic clinic that I've used for years. And so it felt like a huge coincidence that they had also selected Callisim as their preferred source of growth factor treatments because that's what I've been using day to day at home. The Callisim products carry literally thousands of peptides and growth factors because they're animal derived. So they're extracted from stem cells that are harvested from the umbilical cord lining of red deer. And I will link to an interview with much more information on that in the description. Now, because the cells are extracted from waste product, absolutely no harm is done to the animal, but the fact it's a biological product is gonna be enough to put some people off. And I should flag that exosomes and growth factors are a fairly new innovation in skin rejuvenation, and therefore we don't have a lot of long-term safety data about its cosmetic use. That makes some doctors and dermatologists a bit wary of these innovations, particularly the idea of injecting them. But their use topically is becoming much more mainstream with no major safety concerns reported to date. For me, using Callisim's multi-action cream every night has helped balance my skin and bring a new level of hydration that builds over time. So it's not an instant thing because it's coming from improved cell function rather than cosmetically. And I have seen gradual improvements in the plumpness of my skin and in the reduction of fine lines as well. Combining their more potent professional facial serum with microneedling though, really takes the results up a level and is something you can either have done in a clinic or do it yourself at home with your own microneedling stamp or equipment. And if you don't like the thought of using animal source growth factors, you can try microneedling with a plant source alternative. It might not have the same potency and number of growth factors and peptides, but they can still deliver results. I've used Cure microneedle stamps and serums in the past, for instance, and thought they worked very well. And there are other brands out there that use plant-based growth factors in their serums that you can combine with your own microneedle pen roller or stamp. So I'll link to a couple of suggestions below in the description where you'll also find links to all the videos and products I'm discussing today. So it's going to be packed with further information for you to check out.
The next skincare breakthrough I learned about this year was actually covered last week on the channel, and that's the use of estrogen, pronounced estrogen in some countries, on our faces and necks. I had a discussion with two doctors around the use of estrogen in skincare, because while there are benefits, there are also risks. And the upshot is that insufficient levels of estrogen decrease the skin's defenses against oxidative stress, and it becomes thinner with less collagen, decreased elasticity, increased wrinkling, and increased dryness. Several studies link the increase in our levels of estrogen with improved collagen production and skin hydration and reduced inflammation. Two forms of estrogen, estradiol and Estriol have been studied for their potential benefits in treating skin aging. Both have shown promise in improving skin texture, reducing wrinkles, and enhancing overall complexion. Estradiol is the more potent form of estrogen, meaning it has stronger effects on the body and the skin, but carries higher risks. Estriol is a weaker form of estrogen, meaning its effects are less pronounced, but that means a lower risk of unwanted side effects. That's why we're seeing people on TikTok applying low-dose creams to their faces in the belief that the effects will be localised. But applying oestrogen anywhere on the body is something you should 100% speak to a doctor about because what you use and how much you use for anti-aging purposes should be weighed up against your overall hormone profile and stage in life. And for those already using HRT orally or transdermally, there will be benefits to your skin to be gained just from that therapy without having to apply it directly to your face. So if you want to find out more, uh, do check out the full discussion linked in the description. We also talked about some of the estrogen alternatives that are growing in popularity and have some encouraging data to support claims by their makers that the core ingredient methyl estradiol propanoate mimics the effects of estrogen on the skin to stimulate collagen and elastin production while being safer to use. It's another fast developing new strand to skincare innovation and there will be a lot more to come from me on this subject. Another big learning from this year is around the enormous whole body benefits of weightlifting, including to our skin. Because a new study suggests resistance training doesn't just strengthen your muscles, but can strengthen the skin too, reducing the signs of aging. So researchers in Japan reported that while both aerobic and resistance exercise have a positive impact on skin elasticity, resistance training in particular increases dermal thickness. Having thicker skin means fewer wrinkles and less sagging, improves skin texture and moisture, and it makes the skin less susceptible to external pollutants and UV radiation. And the researchers found resistance exercise caused the skin to behave more youthfully at a cellular level, including increased collagen production. And the most pronounced effects were seen in people who lifted weights. So the theory is that weight training alters the circulating levels of cell signaling molecules and hormones, delivering the anti-aging benefits. And it all adds to what is fast emerging as concrete science around the role muscle plays in aging. In her book Forever Strong, New York-based Dr. Gabrielle Lyon argues that muscle is actually the organ of longevity and believes that loss of muscle mass is one of the greatest contributors to age-related disease, physical and mental decline. So I joined a gym a few months ago and this research has certainly had me stacking up the weights. This was also the year I really got on board with red light therapy. I'm a big believer in finding ways to gently stimulate and support our skin without putting it through its paces too much. And when it comes to anti-aging skincare and clinical or at-home treatments, that can be a delicate balance. One of the gentlest yet most effective treatments around, in my view, is red light therapy, which typically uses low level wavelengths of red and near infrared light to treat skin issues, including wrinkles and scarring. The difference between red and near infrared light is simply the wavelength, with red light falling into the visible part of the light spectrum and near infrared falling into the invisible part. It's thought to work by strengthening the mitochondria in our cells, which play a vital role in supporting and boosting a cell's energy, working in tandem with the energy-carrying molecule found in all cells, called ATP. In a Korean study, 76 patients with visible facial wrinkles were treated with LED on the right half of their faces twice a week for four weeks, 
and followed up three months later, including a group that were given a sham treatment. In the results, there was a significant reduction of wrinkles and an increase in skin elasticity and a marked increase in the amount of collagen in those treated with LED compared with the untreated group. But what we also know about red light is that too much of it is not necessarily a good thing and that it's possible we could overdo it. And when I interviewed the scientist and founder of Maysama Skincare, Bev May Sanderson, she said she believes the benefits of a red light mask or panel can be gained and maintained long term in just six minutes a day at home to keep ourselves energized and to support the production of collagen, which contributes to our skin looking bouncy and youthful. And she points to studies suggesting red light emits a burst of free radicals, which are unstable molecules, that are initially helpful to the skin, but only up to a point. And she explained that if free radicals are allowed to accumulate beyond a certain level, they then start to undo the good work of your red light. Based on all this, I now use Bev's red light panel to treat my face and neck for six minutes every other day. And because it has a pulsed red light option in there, which I use for a couple of minutes within my session, I'm hoping to receive all the benefits of red light while minimizing the buildup of free radicals. This year, I also started taking supplements especially for my skin. So most days I take collagen powder and a hyaluronic acid supplement. Collagen is the most abundant protein in our body and is used to make connective tissue, which is why it's so important to the strength of our bones, skin, muscles, and cartilage. But our bodies gradually make less of it as we age. And now it appears through recent studies that hydrolyzed collagen, which are extracted peptides of a lower molecular weight, can be better absorbed by our bodies and therefore have greater potential to replace some of what we lose. A Korean study published last year demonstrated that after 12 weeks of supplementation with collagen peptides of lower molecular weight, with half of participants told to take just one gram of collagen peptides daily alongside a placebo group, those taking the supplements had markedly reduced wrinkling. We also have a review paper evaluating the results of 19 eligible randomized double-blind and controlled trials exploring oral supplementation with hydrolyzed collagen with a total of 1,125 participants, mainly women, aged between 20 and 70 years. And the sources of the collagen differed between marine and animal collagen and with doses between two to five grams over eight to 12 weeks. But the analysis showed overall favorable results with hydrolyzed collagen supplementation compared with placebo in terms of skin hydration, elasticity, and wrinkles. I also take a hyaluronic acid capsule every day because of the science behind it. Human studies have shown significant improvements in skin health and the signs of aging in people taking hyaluronic acid supplements. And there are several studies showing hyaluronic acid does make it past the digestive system to our skin. And those controlled studies reported significant decreases in wrinkles compared with placebo groups. And we want to use high molecular hyaluronic acid, which has also been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects. So you're getting more than just aesthetic benefits. And I'll link to the supplements I use in the description if you want to find out more about them. This year, I also learned more about the best ways of boosting blood flow to the skin on our faces and necks and toning our muscles there. And my preferred ways for doing that are either through microcurrent or the totally free way by hand through massage. And recently we heard on this channel from Canadian esthetician Lee Medeiros, who told us how following a massage technique involving buffing her neck for up to three minutes a day with a tightly rolled towel soaked in salted water had tightened the loose skin on her neck, taking it from turkey to toned. And along with that video, I'll also link below to the demo we got from brilliant facial massage specialist, Claire McLean, who took us through some facelifting massage techniques that we can use on ourselves, alongside a few great movements for lymphatic drainage, all of which are totally free ways we can help lift and tighten our skin. For those short on time and often in a hurry like me, a microcurrent device is a great solution, although I do try to avoid ones that give off a very strong current. Instead, I float between this clever little solar-powered Phoenix microcurrent roller, which both massages and stimulates my skin, as well as the big-selling Zip 
Halo microcurrent device, which uses a mix of nano and microcurrent to give you a gentle but effective facial workout. Nanocurrent is smaller than microcurrent, and the theory is that it can promote changes at a cellular level, delivering more gradual results that also support your skin health. And whether you're using facial massage or a microcurrent device, the effects are very similar in that we're boosting the supply of oxygen to our skin cells, which improves productivity, including production of that all-important collagen. And we're also helping to keep our muscles toned and tight. 2023 was the year I went a little easier on my retinoid use, switching from the potent and powerful tretinoin to a gentler but inexpensive retinaldehyde. Why? Because even though I wasn't using the highest strength tretinoin formula, I was still experiencing bouts of dryness on my skin with longer term use that, no matter what I tried, persisted and made my skin look older because it was lacking hydration. And on this channel, I've interviewed advocates of tretinoin for long term use and those who believe it's not the gold standard of skincare for every user. Like you, I've seen the incredible skin smoothing results attributed to tretinoin by some well known skincare influencers. And I believe that it really can deliver great results for those whose skin tolerates it well. And I think that's clear to see. But I also believe those users who say it's done their skin more harm than good. And that's because our skin is different and therefore it reacts differently to skincare actives. So it's not a case of you're using them wrongly. It's just not right for everyone, in my opinion. And I thought dermatologist Dr. Fane Fry made that point really well in our interview earlier this year, where she said the real skincare fountain of youth is sunscreen. For now, I would say that if you're looking to start out on retinoids, do begin gently on a low strength and gradually build up strength and frequency, observing the changes in your skin. If any dryness or redness persists beyond the first six weeks or so of treatment, then I would look to cut back on strength and frequency until you find your happy place. And ideally, if you're using prescription retinoids, it should be under medical guidance, particularly in those early months and not just bought off the internet. And remember, that stronger doesn't necessarily do your skin favors. And my approach to skincare actives, supplements, and even HRT is to look at the minimum doses I can use to give me the benefits rather than the maximum I can possibly tolerate, which is what increases the chances of unwanted side effects. Fast paced progress in technology, AI, and research mean that before too long, we'll be able to have our skin types and composition analyzed, and we'll be given tailored skincare protocols and ingredients suited to our individual needs. Until then, remember that in life, in diet, in exercise, and in skincare, balance is key. So avoid extremes, in my view. 2023 was also the year it became abundantly clear to me that nothing in our body and our skin operates in isolation. So if we want to keep our skin healthy and bouncy and continue to look and feel energized, then we need to look beyond skincare to the core essentials for health span and skin span. That means we need to eat a diet made up of natural whole foods in my view, avoiding processed stuff in the main and trying to minimize our sugar intake, something that's still a work in progress for me, I'm not gonna lie. And we should aim to get adequate amounts of protein in our diet too, to help keep our muscle strength. We also need adequate sleep and regular exercise that includes a little aerobic training, even daily walking is helpful but making sure we're lifting heavy things to maintain and even build muscle strength as we age. All of that is gonna show on your skin. And I always say that when you look at the influencers and celebrities who have amazing skin in their later years, you're looking at a lifestyle package and not just skincare. So that was a whirlwind tour of just some of the standout learnings and conversations from this year. I cannot wait to bring you more in 2024. And I wanna say a huge thanks to those who have supported me this year and supported what I'm trying to do on this channel, which is to bring you a range of expert opinions that will help us understand all the options available to us, as well as the latest science and innovations. If you haven't already, then remember by hitting subscribe along with the notification bell, you won't miss a future video from this channel. And you'll find more advice and information around how to age well on my website, honest.scott. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.